Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a modular system for your game. Now, there's plenty of types of modularity. What we're going to be working with is what I'm going to call an entity to component system. A garden is a great example, but I've set up two examples and there'll be a link to the GitHub repo below in case you want to play around with it yourself. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of talking and do yourself a favor and just listen to these few minutes. It's going to help you a lot understand the concept that we're going to be working with. And then I'm really just going to showcase the project. I'm not going to be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial as that's a little bit of a longer process, but as long as you understand the logic it's going to be possible for you to work with it now the normal setups that most of us learn to do is looks somewhat like this we have a rifle and this rifle might have attachments and as you can see every time i press r here it'll you know refresh the gun with new attachments and new setup and this actually proves to have different stats on the gun which you can see out here on the right side you can see the stats also shuffle with the attachments and i'm going to go a bit deeper into this in a sec but as i was saying most setups that we learn to work with look something like this we have our rifle which is our main entity and then we have a bunch of scripts that we might plug into this this could be each of the attachments that's under the weapon that then grabs the weapon script and modifies the stats that's how it would typically look and how you've probably learned to do it so the you know let's say the forward grip might go into the rifle and then modify the bullet spray and the whatever stock might modify the accuracy same with the scope and so on and they you know the main part of this setup is really that the attachments go in and modify the rifle now this is what we want to avoid because this can make data unpredictable as your system scale this works completely fine if you just have one or two integrations into your main entity but the thing is as soon as you start building on it and might want to do it in a modular way like a lot of roguelikes do it or rpg games with skill trees and items and whatnot that's a lot of things playing into the stats and in that case you want to know and be able to control what modifies these stats and when just taking an example of when that really matters let's try and just grab up a calculator really quickly and just go through some very basic math let's say we have 100 base strength and then we have a modifier that gives us 50 percent more strength and we have a modifier that gives us any extra strength now let's try and time this was 1,5 like that that gives us 150 and then plus 20 and there we go we got 170 i'll just try and clear this and say we have 100 base strength plus 20 that gives us 120 times 1,5 and there you go that gives us 180 which is obviously a completely different number from 170 and this is one of the good reasons why we want to control the execution order and different setups allows you to do just now this. going back out here looking at what i have I have my main weapon here that just has a bunch of weapon attachments. This, as you can see, are the pistol grip, grip attachment, scope, stock, body, and so on. And all it, all it really does is just it removes the ones that exist and places new ones every time I press R. And as you can see, that also shuffles the stats. So let's have a little bit of a deeper look into how this works because it's quite satisfying at how small it actually is. So if we go in here and look, and you can see this whole script is actually only 72 lines of code. Now, the get random is actually a custom extension. Don't worry too much about it. It really just gets a random from a list. It does nothing else. But but here's the really funny part as you'll notice the stock prefabs scope prefabs pistol prefabs they're all part of the type of weapon part and we're going to look into the type of weapon part in just a bit but the most important part is you'll notice that we have this weapon parts list and they're all added to this once they're instantiated and that's exactly what i'm doing in the setup weapon i just make sure to remove everything that already exists for the weapon i instantiate every part and just immediately add it to the weapon parts and then i go to the set weapon stats and this is where the magic of this logic really happened because let me go into my second beautiful picture here on Honestly, probably shoots in a museum, but you know, I'll, I'm gonna give it to you guys for free. Here we have our rifle. This is our main entity, and you can see this is already way different from the other picture where the main rifle is standing on its own. In here, the main rifle is actually the main entity of the entire system, right? So the rifle holds some stats. That's the ones that we see here. That's the shoot data. That's the struck. And those are popularized up here, populated up here. Oh, sorry, up here. And as you can see here, what we do is we go through each attachment and go to the stat. And this means that like this, we actually know the order of these attachments because these attachments that you see here are the attachments in this list. So as you can see right here, I just go through the body, the stock scope muzzle and so on because they're added in order and we can order this list however we want it but in my case i've just ordered it as how i instantiate them and you can see it basically goes through each one so what really happens down here in this one is we make some data we iterate through each weapon part and we modify that data and then in the end we return it to the data that we can see out in the inspector the way this logic runs is the rifle actually makes some kind of empty data that's stats and it sends that to this attachment for them to modify it return it and then we go on to the next one so it's really just a back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and boom we get our final stats that's really all that happens here and it actually all happens in these four lines which is very magical now this example is very very simple but it, get, it gives you the idea it just runs through each weapon part and allows the weapon part to modify it now let's have a little bit of a look into these weapon parts because this setup is probably a bit unfamiliar to a lot of you so going into the weapon part whoops 
Uh, the weapon part here is actually in the gun weapon. Normally I would make this as a class of itself, but it's so small that it doesn't need to be anything else. So all this is, is it's an abstract class. Abstract being a bit of a mix between what you know as a regular class where you can inherit inheritance, but you can also use it like an interface, which is what I do here with an abstract class. So this means that any class that inherits from weapon part is automatically using mono behavior and is now required to have the shoot method. That's exactly how we can model or go through each part and have different outcomes with the same method. That's because they're each abstracted from the shoot. So they all call this shoot, they all have the shoot function, but they do it differently. Now, just to, for simplicity's sake, let me go out to the assets scripts and into the gun folder. And here you can see I have a weapon parts folder, and this is where you will see each weapon part, but each weapon part inherits from weapon part which means it's mono behavior and it's required to have a shoot function. This is one of the reasons why it's modular because I could very easily create a new weapon attachment and just call it something else and the setup would be completely similar. So as you notice here, it returns the some shoot data and it takes in some shoot data. That's exactly what we see out here in our weapon. You can see when we iterate through it, we have the data, the shoot data, that, and we set that equal to the result of the shoot given the old data. So you can basically see it like this, that we get some new data and we go in and send it the old data for it to modify. So going back here, you can see in the case of the body, all it does is it has some damage modifier it takes in the data dot damage and then it just adds the damage modifier and it returns it it's as simple as that this is really as few lines as it takes and this whole modular setup is technically i don't know maybe 100 lines for everything to just work and to plug and play and you could easily make more attachments with this and grow the system i know this might be a little bit wonky and might be a hard example to follow but this was really the easiest and simplest setup i could make now the other setup that i have is a little bit more in depth so let's go have a look at that so if we go to scenes and into the magic scene you can see here we have a different setup where it's a little bit more interactive what we have here is a staff that shoots this evil pumpkin because i thought it's spooktober right now so let's stick to on theme so you can see it'll shoot it'll hit it and it'll damage it for five you can see we can shoot as much as you want and it'll damage it for five each time now going on to the staff we have the testing fold out here which is part of the odin setup and in order to add new modifiers in my prefabs here on the magic, I have modifiers and you can see I have three modifiers that I've just set up here. One being fire. I can just add that. Boom. Now that's fire on the staff. When I shoot, it shoots with fire. And when it hits it, it now damages eight. I can also just clear the modifiers. We're back to default with only five damage. And then I can add the ice modifier and I can add that. And now you can see it'll shoot with ice. There's ice effects up here. And now it'll damage over time. But a very interesting part of this setup, which is what makes it very good for something like a roguelike, is the fact that we can have multiple and they can play together and we don't have to hard code any interaction. So you can see now we have both the eyes and the fire. We have both the eyes and the fire effect. And when we hit it with damage 8, we also have the damage over time effect. And things could technically also be layered. So you can see I can add the biggest, which makes the bullet even bigger. I could go ahead and add it again and add it again. And it'll just continue making the bullet bigger and bigger. It does nothing else than just make it big. This is really just to show you what it can do. And I can clear the modifiers again and go back to how it was in the beginning. Now this setup is a little bit more in depth, but the general idea of it is actually the exact same. So you'll notice that here it does it on fire. It does the logic of modifying. So all I do is I instantiate a projectile and I have each modifier itself take the projectile and modify whatever it needs to modify with this projectile and it's really as simple as that it doesn't do much they add modifiers just to add it's just for the testing setup that you saw with the button out there now going back here you can see we have a magic modifier script here which is once again an abstract class I've left notes for you in order to understand what they do and what they require and how the setup works and if we go and look at the inheritors you'll see we have biggest fire and ice which was the ones that you saw going into fire you can see the exact modifiers that happened here and you can see it runs the modifier and if we hold mouse over it it will say modify the stats on the, of the projectile you can see we get the projectile we modify the stats here and set them we also change the projectile speed actually then you can see the attach functionality is attach any component or effect to the projectile and then we can have the add staff effect which adds a staff effect when the modifier is added and this is really it. going back to magic modifier we can go have a look at ice acts a little bit different but in general you can see we have the modifier we have the attach and we have the add staff effect which are all part of the abstract class so therefore you're forced to have it now feel free to copy this setup you can use it for exactly what you like the attaching of debuff on the enemy works a little bit differently he has a modifier consumer which we utilize so if we go back to the ice you can see it'll actually add an enemy modifier to the projectile the projectile then stores this enemy modifier and keeps track of what it has to add and when it then hits the enemy it'll take grab the consumer of the enemy the modifier consumer and just call consume modifier give it the mod and then the enemy itself is actually handling what happens to him which in this case was the damage over time but you could make another one and i believe it is just called damage over time here you can see it's of the interface enemy modifier and it just damages it just handles damaging him over time and yeah 
I mean, this was really it. It was just meant to be a quick showcase showing what you can do with such modular setup. But the most important part is really just that this logic kind of makes sense to you. I know I went over everything rather quickly and that's why I urge you to maybe watch the video a couple of times, see if you can really understand, try and play around and see if you can make a similar system yourself. And you could just go ahead and copy the GitHub immediately, which you're more than welcome to do, but please just ensure that you actually learn something from it. Cause if you just try and copy the system over and just try and reuse it yourself, that's a good chance that you might get stuck because you don't necessarily understand what to modify and where to modify it and so on. I really hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please do leave a like, comment and subscribe. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.